Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over the rules concerning resistors in series and resistors in parallel. These are the two series diagrams we're going to use, excuse me, the two circuit diagrams we're going to use. On the left hand side, we have our resistors in series, and on the right side, we have our resistors in parallel. I'm going to go over the rules concerning the voltage, the current, and then I'm going to go over the equation we use to calculate the equivalent resistance in each case, and then we'll say a few things about Ohm's law. I wanted to say that these rules apply to series and parallel resistors, regardless of how many resistors there may be in each circuit, whether it's 1, 2, 5, 10, 100, or whatever, of course. Okay, let's get started with the voltage. This is the voltage rule for series resistors. The voltage rule states that the voltage gain from the battery is equal to the sum of the voltage drops across each of the resistors. So the voltage from the battery is equal to the voltage drop across the first resistor plus the voltage drop across the second resistor plus the voltage drop across the third resistor. The battery is what gives our electrons energy. The resistors are what use that energy and the sum of the voltage drops across resistor 1 plus the voltage drop across resistor 2 plus the voltage drop across resistor 3 is going to be equal to the gain from the, the voltage gain from the battery. Okay, for parallel resistors, you can see it's a little different. We have all equal signs. That's because each of these resistors, 1, 2, and 3, are really connected directly to the battery. For example, between resistor number 3 and its connection to the battery, and its connection to the battery, there are no other devices that would be using any of the energy. Therefore, the parallel, the rule for the voltage in parallel resistors is that the voltage drop across number one is equal to the voltage gain from the battery. The voltage drop across number two is equal to the voltage gain from the battery. And the voltage drop across number three is equal to the voltage uh, gain from the battery. And therefore, all four voltages are equal. The voltage gain from the battery is equal to the voltage drop across each of the resistors in that case when we have resistors in parallel. For the current, you can see the current out of the battery. This is the current out of the battery. You can see the current comes out of the battery and then it flows all the way around that circuit. That is the same current regardless of where you are in the circuit. There is only one path for the circuit to take, for, this, for the current to take. That is the definition of a series current, or excuse me, a series circuit. There's a single loop or a single path. There's no place for current to enter. There's no place for current to leave. Whatever comes out of the battery on this side will enter the battery back on this side. Therefore, the current out of the battery is equal to the current through resistor 1, which is equal to the current through resistor 2, which is equal to the current through resistor 3. And basically that tells us that the current is equal anywhere in the circuit. Okay, the current does not get destroyed. The energy that the electrons carry gets used, but the current does not get destroyed. The electrons don't get destroyed. Whatever electrons leave one side of the circuit will enter the other side of the circuit. Okay, and travel completely around that circuit. All right, for parallel resistors, it's of course a little different. You can see we really have three loops. We have loop number one, we have loop number two, and we have loop number three. And the current rule says that the current out of the battery, so we have current that comes out of the battery, the current that comes out of the battery is equal to the current that flows through resistor number one, plus the current that flows through resistor number two, plus the current that flows through resistor number three. You can see we have three branches the current comes out of the battery and then it's going to split some of the current that's going to go through resistor 1, then resistor 2, and then resistor 3. For example, you can see right here at this point, some of the current is going to split. Some of the current is going to travel down through resistor 1. That's what we call I1. The rest of the current continues along. Then again, at this point, obviously, some of the current will travel down through resistor number 2. We call that I2. The rest will continue along and that current flows through resistor number three. So you can see we have three separate currents, one, two, and three, and those have to add up to the current that comes out of the battery. Then of course, after those currents have flowed through those branches, have flowed through those resistors, the current comes back and they all come back together and we get IB again. 
So they join together here, come together and come together. So the current rule says that the current out of the battery is equal to uh, the current through resistor 1 plus the current through resistor 2 plus the current through resistor number 3. Okay, so let's just take a brief pause for a second. These are the voltage and the current rules for series and parallel resistors. You should memorize or understand how those rules work and have a conceptual understanding of how to apply them to series and parallel resistors. All right, now we're going to go over the equations that we use to calculate the equivalent resistance for each circuit. For series resistors, the, series, the resistors just come in a line like this. Therefore, all we do is to get the total resistance or the equivalent resistance we just add up. It's the resistance of resistor number one plus the resistance of resistor number two plus the resistance of resistor number three. Add them up and you get the total resistance. That's all there is to it. Okay, for parallel resistors, it's a little more complicated. There's this kind of ugly looking equation which basically says that one over the total resistance, not the total resistance, but one over the total resistance is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And then you can use that equation to calculate the total resistance. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do that right now. We'll do that in a separate video that focuses on parallel resistors. But just wanted to point out that this is the equation for calculating the equivalent resistance for series resistors. And this is the equation we use for, to calculate the equivalent resistance for resistors in parallel. Okay, the last thing, Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the equation we use when we use when we do calculations concerning the voltage, the current, and the resistance for series resistors. And we can also use Ohm's law, V equals I times R, the voltage equals the current, I is the symbol for the current, times the resistance for parallel resistors. That equation can be used and applied to both uh, types of circuits. Okay, so we're all done. We went through the voltage and the current rules. We went over the equation we use to calculate the current, um, that the equivalent resistance. And then also we just said that we can use Ohm's law for both types of circuits. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Um, try to keep those rules in mind. Maybe it's a good idea to write them down. Think about the two kinds of resistors and how those rules can be applied to those resistors, what happens in those circuits, and I think you should be able to keep that straight in your head. Thank you very much for watching. If you found that video helpful, you can give me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below, and we will see you in the next video.